Well, we really didn't uh, plan to go into this business. I can say it was maybe fate or God just made it happen because how we started, um, my husband was planting passion fruit uh, commercially and he used to supply some other company that used to uh, make passion juice and supply to hotels. So he used to supply every weekend after work and the day he, sub he, he harvested the most, that's when now the company said they had enough, they didn't want any more. And you know, it happens in Kenya, I guess, because that's a common thing, because when uh, produce is in market or is in season, then you find this bumper harvest, so many people have it, and then the prices go down. And now because we had negotiated a fixed price, I think somebody supplied them with a lower price because there was you know, plenty in the market. So they did not want to take ours. So that is what now made my husband decide uh, he didn't want to get into that problem ever again. So he decided to add value. And uh, that's how he, he's the one actually who researched and came up with Whole Passion Jam. That was our first product. <laughs> And uh, he was still in employment at that time. Uh, so he, we would make the whole passion job. Um, it's here. That's how it looks. It has the, the passions, you know, as they are with the seeds. So we would make it and uh, supply it uh, to his colleagues in the office, our friends and relatives. And you know, everyone would give us their feedback here and there. And uh, then we decided to make our second product, which was Passion Jam, which is without seeds, because there are some people who said, oh, we don't want to crunch on the seeds when we're eating bread. We had now two products. And uh, people liked the Passion Jam. And uh, we had someone who said, okay, since uh, I don't have that Passion Jam and I'm already in the market, why don't you supply me? I put my label and we test the markets. So that's how we started. So we started producing for that company. They would put their label and you know take to the market. And we realized it was doing good. It was doing well, because we were not just doing the passion jam. We we're also doing marmalade for them and, uh, and uh, pineapple jam. So then we said, okay, if this organization can take our product to the market and it sells, why don't we get our own brand and, you know, we start. So that's how we started, with the jams and the chutneys. So after some time, we realized, uh, okay, at that time, my husband left employment to join me, so we're doing it full time. And then we realized it wasn't sustainable, and we realized uh, not many people in Kenya take jams you know, with bread. So, it, it, and the market was not big enough to sustain us. So we decided now to research more and come up with products that are not in the market. So that's when we came up with uh, ma mango ketchup because we realized uh, when mangoes are in season, there's so much mangoes and they just go to waste in the farm. You know, they rot and all that. So we said, okay, um, in Asia, they have mango ketchup, they have banana ketchup, they have all these other fruits ketchup. But in most parts of the world, they only know tomato ketchup. So we decided, okay, let's, you know, take the bull by its horns and just, you know, uh, take a risk. So we decided to make mango ketchup and we took it to the market. And we were surprised that people liked it, yes because it's uh, our second uh, best-selling product. Our first product is the cassava flour and then mango ketchup. So people received it well, they like it, because uh, you can use it you know, with fries, just the same way you eat your tomato ketchup. You can use it with food, you know, your rice and stew. You can use it as a marinade if you want to marinate your chicken or pork for those who, are, who like pork or even meat, beef. You marinate it and you get that sweet and sour flavor. It's very nice because we just use pure mango 